Bonjour tout le monde. Je suis très heureux d'être ici avec la ministre Murray, la docteur Tam et la secrétaire parlementaire Van den Belt. Before I get started, let me wish Eid Mubarak to all Muslim Canadians celebrating today. Although this year will be different than normal, I know that the values of charity and community will be as strong as ever. Today, I want to talk about where we are on a number of important items. The spread of the virus and new tools to address it, support for farm workers and small businesses, and finally, the future of the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. Let me start with the spread of the virus. In just the past week, we've seen COVID-19 cases rising in many communities. Frankly, it's a reminder that we can't let down our guard. So please, keep doing your part and follow the recommendations of public health officials like those uh, who are working incredibly hard here at PHAC. Because that's how you'll keep yourself and others safe. And to all the women and men working here at the Public Health Agency and in teams right across the country, thank you for your outstanding service. Since March, Canadians have been working around the clock to keep each other safe. And together, we've come up with innovative solutions to meet an unprecedented challenge. A few weeks ago, I announced that our government was working with the Government of Ontario, BlackBerry and Shopify volunteers on a new app to help slow the spread of this virus. As of this morning, the COVID Alert app is ready to download through the App Store on your phone. Right now, it's connected to the Ontario health system, but we know other provinces will be joining in soon. So people across the country can and should download it today. This is another tool to protect your health. Here's how it works. The app will let you know if you've been in contact with someone who has the app and has tested positive for COVID-19. If that's the case, it will then encourage you to call your provincial health services for guidance on what to do. I want to be clear, this app isn't mandatory. It's completely voluntary to download and to use. And it doesn't connect, collect your name, your address, your geolocation, or any other personal information. I've downloaded the app this morning, and I encourage you to do the same. The more people use it, the better it can trace and therefore slow the spread of the virus. In fact, health experts say that if enough people sign up, this app can help prevent future outbreaks of COVID-19 in Canada. I know that Premier Ford will have more to say about this made in Ontario system, but I want to thank him for his partnership in getting this program up and running. We're working hard with our Atlantic provincial partners to integrate their health systems into the app next. And at the same time, we're in discussion with other provinces, and we expect that they'll be coming on board soon as well. Depuis ce matin, vous pouvez télécharger la nouvelle application Alerte COVID dans l'App Store de votre téléphone. En ce moment, L'application est connectée au système de santé de l'Ontario, mais on sait que les autres provinces vont bientôt suivre. À travers le pays, les gens peuvent et devraient télécharger l'application gratuitement dès aujourd'hui. L'appli va vous informer si vous entrez en contact avec quelqu'un d'autre qui a l'appli et qui a testé positif pour la COVID-19. Si ça arrive, vous allez être dirigé vers les autorités sanitaires de votre province et ils vont vous expliquer la suite des choses. C'est un autre outil qu'on met à votre disposition pour protéger votre santé. Personne n'est obligé de télécharger l'application, mais plus il y a de gens qui l'utilisent, mieux elle fonctionnera. En fait, les spécialistes de la santé disent que si assez de gens l'utilisent, ça pourrait même aider à prévenir les futures éclosions de COVID-19 au pays. J'ai moi-même téléchargé plus tôt ce matin l'application et je vous encourage à faire la même chose dès aujourd'hui à travers le pays. L'application ne recueille pas votre nom, votre adresse, votre géolocalisation ou vos renseignements personnels. Since the start of the pandemic, our government has worked hard to keep Canadians safe while getting people the support they need. Of course, we know there's still more to be done, so today we're taking yet another step forward. This morning, I can announce that our government is investing almost $59 million to protect the health and safety of migrant workers on Canadian farms. This will fund more farm inspections, provide emergency relief when needed, and improve the overall living conditions on farms.
We also know that help is needed right now in many locations. Currently, thanks to the $100 million investment we announced in May, the Red Cross is helping the most at-risk workers in the Windsor-Essex region in particular. Ministers Qualtro, Bebo and Mendicino are also looking at ways to improve the temporary foreign worker program as a whole. This includes measures like developing mandatory requirements for better living conditions for workers so that we can continue to support and protect the people who keep food on our plates. Que vous soyez étudiant ou que vous cherchiez une job à temps plein, il y a beaucoup d'opportunités en ce moment dans le secteur de l'agriculture et de l'agroalimentaire. Les gens qui travaillent dans ce domaine nourrissent nos familles et remplissent les, les étagères de nos épiceries. Si ça vous intéresse, je vous encourage à aller chercher de l'information à propos du programme « Mettez la main à la pâte » sur le site agr.gc.ca. Je veux aussi parler un peu de ce qu'on fait pour soutenir les travailleurs et les entreprises dans l'ensemble de l'économie. Tout d'abord, on sait que pour de nombreuses entreprises, payer le loyer après des mois de perte de revenus, ce n'est pas évident. Au printemps, on a instauré l'aide d'urgence du Canada pour le loyer commercial qui permet de réduire de 75 le loyer des petites entreprises. Over 700,000 employees have benefited from the Canada Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance, people who have been able to keep their jobs because of the help businesses got through this program. And we know there are even more people still to reach. And that's why we are officially extending the Canada Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance Program for the month of August. Today, I also want to speak about what comes next for the millions of people who still rely on the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. In the weeks ahead, we'll have more details about what will come after the CERB. But to people who need this program, don't worry no one will be left behind. Our goal is to transition everyone on the CERB to employment insurance, because EI should cover every Canadian who's looking for work. And for those who don't qualify for EI right now, like gig or contract workers, we will create a transitional parallel benefit that is similar to employment insurance. It will include access to training and being able to work more hours and earn more money while receiving the benefit. That's only appropriate as our economy reopens and brings back more jobs. There will also be a sickness and caregivers benefit for Canadians not covered at work if they get COVID-19 or if their kids or parents get it and they have to take care of them. We'll have more details to share before the end of August, but here's the bottom line. We intend to cover every Canadian who is looking for work with a better 21st century EI system. That is our goal. And of course, there will be no increase to EI premiums during this challenging time. Notre but c'est de transférer tous ceux qui reçoivent encore la PCU au régime d'assurance emploi. L'assurance emploi devrait couvrir tous les Canadiens qui cherchent du travail. Et pour ceux qui n'y auront toujours pas accès, comme les travailleurs à contrat, on va créer une prestation de transition similaire à l'assurance-emploi. Cette prestation va notamment prévoir un accès à la formation et permettre aux gens de retourner au travail et de gagner plus d'argent tout en recevant des prestations. On va aussi créer un programme de prestations de maladie et de prestations pour proches aidants. Si vous ne pouvez pas travailler parce que vous êtes malade, si vous prenez soin de quelqu'un, on va encore être là pour vous. On va avoir plus de détails à partager dans les semaines à venir, mais voici ce qu'il faut retenir. On a l'intention de couvrir tous les Canadiens qui cherchent du travail grâce à un régime d'assurance-emploi amélioré et adapté au 21e siècle. Et évidemment, pas question d'augmenter les cotisations à l'assurance-emploi durant cette période difficile. Merci.